Hello, welcome to another episode of Analytics in 15 Minutes. My name is Ali Alemi. I'm a senior streaming specialist solutions architect. And today in this episode, I'm going to talk about how to build a question answering agent with generative AI and data streaming services. Okay, the question is, what is generative AI? Generative AI is a type of AI that can create new contents, ideas, and for example, human conversations, stories, images, videos, and music. It sounds amazing and it's important to understand that they are at core powered by foundation models that they are machine learning models or AI models that pre-train a vast amount of unstructured data. And this unstructured data is usually a very large amount of the internet data is available to these machines, uh, to these machine learning models. And uh, basically they contain so much large number of parameters that can make them capable of learning complex semantics. And they can apply these semantics in variety of, and range of different contexts. So if it's in a different context, they can basically make a decision and apply their knowledge in that context and provide an accurate answer as per that context. This ability helps us to be able to build a customized um, you know, generative AI application. And we can also customize these foundation models to apply the foundation model and apply their knowledge in performing domain-specific tasks, such as healthcare, travel, or other uh, you know, line of businesses, as you can imagine. So let's talk about what are the ways that we can do this. The, you know, um, one of the ways that traditionally comes to mind is we train our own foundation model from the scratch. We have the domain, um, you know, specific knowledge. It's uh, it's our knowledge. It's our private knowledge, and we can basically train a model that you no, know, uh, we train it with that knowledge, and it will always provide the accurate answer, um, you know, because it's trained specifically for that knowledge. But this approach is time consuming, requires a lot of expertise, and is complex. By the time that we finish training our knowledge, our knowledge could change because the knowledge constantly changes. And then we would need to start the training over again. We can take a moderate approach and we take one of the existing foundation models, which has you know, pretty uh, much of the common knowledge of, of the internet out there. And then we fine tune it with our specific you know, private knowledge. But that is still requires some time, uh, uh, a little bit less time, but still requires some time and effort and expertise to do that. Or there is another simpler way that I'm going to talk about more in this talk, which is in context learning. Let's assume we have a foundation model um, that has no knowledge of our internal travel policies and booking policies and also our customers because our customer information is private. So this foundation model has no knowledge of that as well as our internal policies. If we just ask that foundation model, can I reschedule my flight to a later time in the evening? The foundation model might say, yeah, sure. Why not? You can do that. You can do anything. But that's not an accurate answer. Um, what if we provide a richer context and then ask this question again? We, in the context, we explain to the model that you are a conversation agent for a travel information, and then the customer name is John Doe, and he has booked a flight um, that departs tomorrow at 12 p.m. to San Francisco, and the next flight to San Francisco is after midnight. And by the way, our booking policy does not allow flights to be rescheduled within 24 hour, uh, hours. And now customer question is, can I reschedule my flight to a later time? Probably the answer that the foundation model will produce is, hi, Mr. Jando, I understand that you want to reschedule your flight, but unfortunately, our internal booking policy does not allow you to do so. As you can see, this is what we expected to happen. Let's talk about um, the API call 
uh, a naive approach is we make an API call wherever the data is, the customer data is, or um, you know the um, our internal wiki is, and we get basically the data we need, we need from an API call. But in reality, the data um, you know in today's microservice world is siloed across many many um, diverse data storages. It could be um, some, some of that data could be in Amazon Aurora. Some of that data could be in a key value storage such as DynamoDB, or maybe some of that data is coming in as a stream in format of a streaming in Amazon Kinesis. Uh, or we have indexed some of that data in Amazon OpenSearch. So how we can make one API call and get all that data piece together, right? That, that's a very complex problem. So therefore, mm, Many API calls to wherever the data already is, is not going to work. We need to bring all that data and build a customer 360 view in one place first. So that's that's one problem we need to fix with data engineering. Uh, we need uh, help from data engineering to uh, give us a build us a customer 360 view so we can get that record with one api call whatever we need just we just give it a customer id and get all the information so because we can do that with just giving a customer id and getting all that information um, for that we it's an easier problem we need just a key value data storage but what if what about um you know um uh, the policies that uh, needs to be uh, searched and we, we need to do a relevancy search in order to get the uh, relevant policy and, and use that in our context. For that, we need uh, a, sec a, a, a different type of um, a storage. Um, so it, and a storage that is not as simple as key value type of API call, uh, a storage that can do similarity search. And, and for that, we are going to use a concept of uh, vector embedding, which I'm going to explain next. Uh, but so far, let's just recap what we have. We have this data storage uh, that stores the user profile and his history. We can give a customer key and give us uh, customer information. We'll talk about how we can build that and what uh, technologies we can use as a storage. And then also we need to after that, we need to do a relevancy search and get what um, you know uh, domain-specific knowledge we have in our internal repository, which is relevant to this prompt. And then we do that search and we get the result and we append that to the context. And then finally, with that context, we can submit it to a foundation model, which on AWS could be deployed on Amazon SageMaker with the help of Amazon SageMaker Jumpstart. We can get a foundation model deployed and expose an endpoint very quickly, very, very easily. And, and the endpoint also is uh, going to be private. And you can uh, basically put that within the boundary of your governance and make sure that the data is private. Uh, or you can use Amazon Bedrock, uh, which is in preview today. And uh, that's another option you can do. Let's understand what is vector embedding. So vector embedding is basically means that um, when we store relevant uh, semantics somewhere close to each other in an n-dimensional space, and that's called vector embedding. So if we if we do that, it's it's basically um, a technique in machine learning for finding you know, similar concepts and finding the relation between the semantics. And there are storages that they can do that for us, um, you know, and, and those storages can perform similarity search for us. Um, those, and there are services on AWS that they can do and you can rely upon. Amazon Kendra is one, and you can all you need to do is just point it to uh, your uh, internal wiki or data lake, and it can basically vectorize all the text available there. There, it tokenizes and vectorizes them, and and then store them, um, you know, in a in dimensional space for you. Or you can basically use Amazon RDS or Amazon OpenSearch for storing the vector information. But first, you would need to convert and tokenize the text and convert them to vectors. And these vectors are numbers. And these numbers are basically the way computer understands the semantics. So we understand semantics in words, and computer understands the same semantics in numbers. Something needs to convert them. And as you can guess, 
the computer can help us to convert them, right? Because the computer is the one who understands them. So why not we use the foundation model to do the translation for us? So if you're using, um, you know, anything other than Amazon Kendra, such as Amazon RDS or OpenSearch, um, you're welcome to use the foundation models that they generate embedding. And you can basically build a pipeline that uh, uh, you, you basically feed that with the tokenized text and, and then you get the embeddings and then you have to store the embeddings in Amazon OpenSearch or Amazon RDS. But then you need to remember um, it's not a one-time thing because the, your internal knowledge constantly updates. So you need to build uh, a, a data pipeline that constantly captures the changes and in near real time generates new vectors and store those vector emitting in a um, you know, vector emitting storage. Here's where data streaming can help us because with traditional bad jobs, we need to wait until the next time the bad job runs and basically goes and refreshes and updates everything. But with the streaming job, we get near real time access to the data changes. And the way that the streaming jobs do that is, um, you know, by capturing the data changes, a process that is called CDC. Um, CDC data basically is a format of the data that ca captures the data changes and stores metadata about when did the change happen? What was the change? What was the value before? What was the value after? And then the process engine, a stream processing engine, can process that data and merge this data on top of the data that already exists in the target storage. And that way we can keep the target storage always in sync with the source storage. Uh, we talked about the left-hand side. Um, uh, that is unchanged. Our application service uh, is going to make the API call to uh, either uh, a key, you know, Amazon Document DB or Dynamo DB or Memory DB, which are all, all best services for uh, storing any unstructured data. And, and when we have a key and we want to just fetch the value, um, building a customer 60 view there. And then um, uh, you can use Amazon Aurora RDS uh, with PG Vector for similarity search, or you can use Amazon Open Search um, for similarity search, or as I talked about it, you can use Amazon Kendra. Um, and then you can use Amazon SageMaker and Bedrock for deploying your foundation model. But then on the right-hand side, um, here's uh, where the, our data pipelines are gonna help us. So um, if we have our internal knowledge repository in a data lake or in, a, in an Amazon DynamoDB storage or even in Amazon Aurora or RDS, um, the connectors, um, source connectors such as Amazon source connector, source Kafka connector for Amazon S3 or source Kafka connector for Amazon DynamoDB or source Kafka connector for Amazon um, Aurora or RDS can help us with capturing the data changes and then ingesting those CDC data or captured data changes into a topic in Amazon MSK and then processing those topics using Amazon uh, managed uh, service for Apache Flink and, and then um, keeping our um, data storages um, at destination in sync with our source whether it's the customer profile data or is, is our uh, vectorized uh, data storage, we can use these technologies, these data streaming pipelines to um, not only load the data for the first time, but also always keep up with the data changes and, and keep them up to date there. Again, if you want to learn more about these technologies and you want to uh, get a hands-on experience, I'm introducing more resources for you here. Uh, in, on these links, and then you can also uh, use other, uh, you know, blogs and other uh, new announcements that uh, are released every day from AWS um, to go and learn more about uh, these technologies and how you can build, um, you know, uh, a customized generative AI application today with the power of Amazon SageMaker and uh, Amazon Streaming Data Services. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, looking forward to talk to you again.